Hi and welcome to Blaze of Thunder. In today's video, we are going to be fitting the tail boom and tail drive, then going on to fitting the tail gear, blade holder and possibly a servo. Last um, video, Glenn fitted the scale rotor head and the servos and set up the drive gear and the motor. So we'll now move on from that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is assemble and fit the tail boom. A few things to bring to your attention. As this um, helicopter is a torque tube, you have to, one, assemble the torque tube, mount it on its bearing and the bearing mount. Um, one thing to bring to your attention that is extremely important, the tail drive on this particular helicopter turns anti-clockwise which means you have to make sure that you get the torque tube the correct way round. On this particular helicopter, the drive has not been loctited, but it is a left-hand thread. So if you get it in the wrong way round and you haven't loctited these, the drive will wind itself apart. You'll end up with no tail drive whatsoever. Now, on the line system, if this was an Align helicopter, these tails are already absolutely solid. You'd never get that off unless you decide to butcher it or break it or crash. But we'll put that to one side. So first thing we have to do is you slide the bearing on. Now it has to be just about halfway. So what we will do, <coughs> little bit of glue just a little bit too much where's my tissue here we go and you gently and carefully slide the bearing just so it touches and you just rotate it just to make sure that as the glue sets you're not actually binding up the bearing As you see, that is now solid, but it spins nice and easily, no graunching and no roughness. So, secondly, that back on there. Now there's a rubber mounting that goes with the bearing. You slide that onto there. Pop it over nice and carefully. Making sure it's even all the way around. And again, it still spins nice and freely. Now, as these are not Loctited, we will Loctite them now A little bit of Loctite. On the thread, as we do not want them coming undone in flight. You don't have to be ham-fisted or a butcher or use a pair of pliers. Make sure it touches and then a nip. And we'll do that to the other end because neither of them have been Loctited. Don't 
don't need gallons of it. First couple of threads and again turn it in till it touches and a gentle nip. Now all we have to do is ensure that there's no debris or dirt inside the tube. Small amount of silicon to ease getting the <coughs> excuse me the shaft and its rubber and its mounting down the tube all in one swift movement. So again, you don't force it. A little bit of a gentle twist just to ease. Pop it in and. Slide it through, and that is the tail boom assembled, ready for fitting. Okay, so now we're going to fit the tail boom into the helicopter. A couple of things to bring to your attention is one, you have to make sure that you've got the slot in the right place, and when you push the tail boom into the mounting block, you push it all the way in till it stops. And secondly, the drive is connected correctly into the umbrella gear at the front of the gearbox. To help do that, it always helps sometimes just to give the road ahead a little bit of a turn. But you do have to make sure that the umbrella gear goes right the way on and is a good solid drive. What you don't want to do is just go, yeah, it should be in there, and then you're only driving by a couple of mil. So let's carry on and do that. So we make sure that the slot is in the right place and hold the front of the frame feel that the slot is located and then nice firm push it all the way in until it's absolutely solid and then as you can see the tail drive is free so we just ease that in gently and that's all the way in and as you see, drive is all the way through from either end of the tail boom, nice and solid. So these are bolts into nylock nuts. So we nip these up evenly. Again, you don't want to wind them right the way in and be ham fisted just to nip them up so everything's nice and solid and the last bolt is goes through the tailbox unit there is a locating peg that helps secure the tail boom nice and solid and it all works nicely Okay, so the next thing to do is to put the tail gear on. But before you put the tail gear on, a couple of things to bring to your attention. Um, if your helicopter has a tail, uh, tail boom mounted servo, you need to put those mounts on. This particular helicopter, the servo was mounted in the back of the frame, so we don't have to do that. Some tail support mounts are a one-piece unit that is slid over. We've only got to put this um, tail control rod guide on which actually just holds this little metal sleeve to give the tail control a little bit of support. And again it's plastic with a nut and bolt but the bolt is a small nylock. So all we have to do is carefully slide that over, slacken it off a little bit. Positioning isn't important at this precise moment, but it's always best when you're starting and you're not sure. Put it in the middle for now and just nip it so it doesn't slide off. So, <coughs> excuse me, we'll put that to one side and we'll concentrate on doing the tail. Okay, so the next part of it that we're going to put together is the tail gearbox. 
Now this is the tail gearbox that came with the helicopter. We've done a preliminary inspection of it and we found that we weren't particularly happy with the way that the tail has felt. It's quite graunchy, quite rough. We've gone to strip it down and as you see there is a broken bolt on the end of the blade grip. So we have decided to upgrade from the one that came with it, we'll put that to one side, and we've gone for the Align tailbox, which it feels a lot nicer, a little bit smoother, and one that we are extremely happy using. Okay, and as you see, it doesn't come completely assembled. With all of Align parts, it's always best to strip it down put Loctite on all of the bolts because they don't come Loctited from the factory they're just dry assembled so you can see what it looks like okay so that's something that we, um, has to be done same with the tail blade grips there's a bearing in there and it needs to be one greased and secondly the screw needs to be loctited which as you can see that has not been done now very carefully a little bit of a assistance and it all comes out one complete little pile of washers so we very carefully separate it down into the order that they've come off mustn't get that mixed up they are marked inner and outer and take a good note that the bearing in the center is faced you've got to make sure you get it back on exactly the same way that it came off okay have a quick look down in there make sure there's no debris that's going to cause us any problems which there isn't so first thing to do little bit of grease on the inner bearing the tricky part is you must excuse my fingers is you have to grease up the bearing carefully ensuring you've got it the correct way around assemble it and the outer race if you see it very carefully it does it is marked out if you're ever unsure always look at the back to see whether it says inner or outer as long as you follow what they say you can't go wrong again okay. don't have to have lots of it but a little bit of grease won't do it any harm. Okay. You notice I'm using a small cocktail stick to make sure that I don't put loads of it everywhere with the end of the tube and you place that carefully down on top. Yeah. Your fingers. A little trick that I like to do is you can assemble it, put it all together, mount it on an Allen key, and then very, very carefully slide it down into the shaft, into the blade grip. And as you see, it fits down there nice and flush. No grease, no masses, greases massive amounts of grease squirting left right and center just a small amount now it's always best with any thread make sure it's wiped off degreased before you put any Loctite on it because 
the grease will inhibit the Loctite doing its job. Yeah. Small amount of Loctite, don't need lots of it, just on the few first few threads. If you put too much in there, it can squeeze out, go onto the bearing, and then you are into a nightmare that you don't really want to have to put rectify so very carefully no need to force it turn it gently it will find its own way in okay put it down so it touches Feel it touch and then a small nip just to make sure it's home. A nice gentle rotation, it should feel nice and smooth, no rough patches, and that, in, that is then fully assembled and ready to go. Then we next have to mount it onto the tail drive shaft. Now, as you see, there is a small indentation in the shaft that's where the allen key has to locate which gives you a good secure drive and ensures as long as you lock tight it that the tail does not lose drive and come off while you are in flight so yeah. have to make sure that this goes on the correct way around you see that end of the shaft flush with the end of the head and you can see that the dip in the shaft lines up perfectly again so small amount of Loctite on the grub screw Don't go putting the blue Loctite down into the thread and into the dip on the shaft. That's too much. When you go to try and disassemble it at any time for maintenance or after a, an incident, you'll have a nightmare getting it off. You just need enough to secure the grub screw. Again, in till it touches, small nip, leave it and wipe off the excess okay the next little job is to put the screws into the little control links now these have a little brass bush slide in quite nicely as you see I'm using an allen key just to sort of help locate them again a little bit of lock tight till it touches, small nip, make sure it all still feels nice and free, which it does, and we'll do the next one, the same procedure, till it touches, small nip, 
and there we are tail control nice and free nice and smooth ready to fit on our helicopter okay um, right now we'll put the tail on on the boom as you see we've mounted the tail control rod and secured the sleeve in the center to give the tail rod its tail control rod a little bit of support and it will fit the fully assembled tail gearbox assembly. Now give it a quick wriggle to make sure that you've got the gear in the right place and that you have the locating holes lined up for the peg on this little, little mounting bracket. A little bit of a wriggle goes in with a nice click and the tail fin and the bolts always sort of take a mental note if you've got a split top and bottom invariably the bolts will be the same length this one's only got a split at the top so you've got to make sure you use the longer of the two bolts a little bit of loctite again you only have to use a small amount sure it started and the second bolt again you don't have to be crazy tight nip it up so you feel it bite and then just a small little nip and that is the tail drive mounted and secure okay so now we're going to fit the tail servo a couple of things to bring to your attention put the mounting rubbers and the sleeves through and we have to Set in there nice and snugly. As you see, we fitted the servo arm and the ball link. Everything's all set as in we showed in our previous videos. And four of them seated nicely, and then a small nip. And that's it, all you need. Now, what you want to do next is not put the servo on its mount straight into the into the airframe, otherwise you'll never be able to get the servo control rod or the tail control rod on top of the servo because it will be very tight and you won't be able to see what you're doing. Little thing to bring to your attention. Ball link end is not marked, so you just have to look carefully to make sure that you get it the right way around and that's the slightly larger hole so you connect that up before you fit it okay. ease it in nice and gently Screwing into plastic, touch and a small nip. Okay, and that is the tail servo mounted and the control link. All mounted up. Uh, 
one final thing to do is the tail boom supports Okay, as you see, we've I fitted the um, tail boom support and the horizontal stabilizer. Put some blades on it, connected all the electrics up, and got the flight controller in. And as you see, put a set of blades on it, so it's now all ready for setup and then test flight. If you like that video, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and also follow us um, on, on our Facebook page where we will have some additional photos and some videos as well. Uh, but um, if you have any questions or comments, please um, add them in the comments on the Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Thanks very much.